Hi guys, Paul from Journey of a Petrol Head. Today we're back in sunny Ireland doing a few more car reviews and what we're looking at this time is a Jaguar. Not the Jaguar XF I'm leaning on, that came out in 2008, the Jaguar S-Type over my shoulder. That was launched the 98 Birmingham Motor Show for a 99 to 2008 model life and was replaced by the XF, codenamed the X250 afterwards because by 2006 the S-Type wasn't selling very, very well. So it came out in a couple of different genres. It started off in 99 was really when it launched on the market with the X200 model. Then there was an X202, a 204 and a 206. So the 202 came out in 2002, the 204 came out in 2004, the 206 came out in 2006, right? So it's easy enough to see what happened. There's various different changes over the years. You'll see from the one over here, it's a 2.7 diesel from 2007. So it's the last year that the S-Type was sold. It's got various different facelift options. So the X200 came out with a loop center console and a different front grille and a different set of front headlights. Let's walk over to the S-Type now and you'll see what I'm talking about. So as we approach the car, the first thing you notice is the stance of the car. The stance of the car is quite nice. There's a nice set of lines. There's a little bit of overhang off the rear wheel you can see, but it's not huge. It's a nice set on the front. It's very, very close to the front. Uh, and there's a nice, I like the four headlights and the return to the notchback design that was built, built into the S-Type of the 60s. So this was really a modern version of the S-Type they made in the 60s. They tried to improve it and bring out a new version. It sold very well initially in various different engines, but in 2005, it really kicked off with a 2.7 diesel to try and target a more common commuter. This is a 2.7 diesel, 207 horsepower more or less, uh, with a six-speed automatic transmission, which was good enough for the time. It's a bit dated now, it has to be said. Um, there's also a 2.5 petrol and a 3-liter petrol. They're both V6 engines, and there's a 4.2 S-Type. Now, the 4.2 S-Type, 400 horsepower, and was launched to target the E55 AMG Mercedes, which I've driven, and to be honest, is a better drive than the Jaguar S-Type, uh, or, and uh, the BMW M5. I've yet to drive an M5. It's supposed to be the class leader. The S-Type or never sold in anything like the numbers the M5 drove. So that tells you all you need to know about the sales. Let's go over and have a closer look at this. So the first thing we notice is this particular model has the leaping Jag on the bonnet. This was an optional extra, was not sold with all cars. Uh, the first monkey would think, oh, pedestrian is gonna be absolutely green in an accident or it's gonna cause problems. That actually comes away in a crash. So it's US and EU approved. The other thing we noticed, the grill for Jaguar incorporates a Jaguar emblem now in this particular X206 model. And there's a slight difference around the, the headlights. Not much of a difference, you wouldn't really notice, but there's a slight difference around the front. This particular one is the SE. So they came in various different trims. The S-Type R and the Sport had a similar set of bodywork. And in that they had a blacked out grille. They didn't have any chrome here. They had a completely different front end with more aerodynamic aids and better cooling. This doesn't need them, it's a 2.7 diesel. Now, the other thing about the uh, Jaguar S-Type, this is an older design. Uh, the diesel engine they're using, it's a Ford Peugeot 2.7 diesel engine, available in Peugeots and Fords and Citroëns and various other cars like that. Because it's an older design, there's no Xenon headlights on this one. You do notice a difference at night. The headlights are good when the inner lights light up for the main beams, but other than that, they leave a little bit to be desired. There's no front parking sensors. Um, what else doesn't it have? It doesn't have the heated windscreen, actually, that the XF came with, which is a bit of a shame. That's a real handy trick that the XF has. We do like that. Okay, what else do we notice with the S-Type? I do like the lines of this particular car. I like the design of these cars. I like it in this racing green color. Um, and what Jaguar did in the later years, they changed it back here a little bit. So what happens now, the lines come all the way down and these rear lights come up into the, into the bodywork. They weren't this high on previous generations. 2005, they came up here. So if you're looking for the last generation of the S-Type, the way you discovered is these lights. If the lights come up into the rear wing here, that's the last generation, it's an X206 as it's called, right? They've changed this back bit back here as well, just tidied up the back a little bit in an effort to boost flagging sales near the end of its sales life. Wasn't overly successful, which is why the XF over there is a completely different design to this particular car. And the XF sold in great, in great numbers and was initially launched with the very same diesel engine. So the diesel engine in this isn't too bad, a 2.7 V6, as I said earlier, a lot of torque, good low downrange grunt, it's, it's quite nice. And being a Jaguar, rear wheel drive. 
Now, the other thing you notice this being an SE model, it has these 17 inch alloys. Now, on the S type, I don't like the 17 inch alloys. I prefer the bigger ones, the uh, 18s and 19s, you can get on the S type or on the Sport because I think they fill the wheel arches better and the wheels themselves are obviously larger with a lower profile tire. So I don't particularly like the 17 inch model. Some people prefer this trim. It just looks more executive than sporty with the chrome lines and the smaller wheels. Depends on your personal preference. Personally, this is not the one I would buy, but you know, it's, it's each to his own. Uh, the boot in this is enormous. The boot in this is actually bigger, I think, than the boot in the XF having test driven the two. And what I do like about this is there's a button on the key. You push the button and the boot opens. Fantastic, right? That's really handy. If you've got your hands full, you can only hold the key, push the button, the boot opens. And the boot, as you can see, a little bit of stuff in here. It goes way, way back. I can't reach the back of the boot stand in here. It's a big, big boot. The one problem with the big, big boot is the spare tire lives under the boot, which isn't so great. The other thing you'll note is the battery is underneath the boot. Uh, because there's no room in the engine bay. The XF has the same trick. Okay, so as usual, let's have a look at the engine bay. Now, this car doesn't come with small engines. So the engine bay is quite large, and this being the 2.7 diesel, there's not a lot of spare room. What you will notice is, there's not an awful lot to see either. So the first thing we see, let's have a quick look at the headlights. It's gonna be very, very hard to change these bulbs. These are not xenons, these are halogen bulbs. But there's an awful lot of plastic covers and arms bending ways are not supposed to bend to get the bulbs out. It's tricky to change the bulbs in an S-type. So that's the start. What else do we see? The first thing we notice, here's the coolant. Hard to see the level in this. What you actually have to do with Jaguar, which is a nice touch, you have to unscrew this. You take off the lid and when you look down here, I don't know if it'll come out on the video, but if you look down here, there's actually a little bit of plastic in there and there's two levels, top and bottom. And if you see the one here on the left, if that's just covered, that's your minimum level. And uh, that's covered, you've too much in. So it's, it's an interesting idea. The other thing we have, we have, here's the oil filler cap. And what I really, really like about this, you have the grade of the oil printed on the filler cap. Jaguar are good at this. We've seen this in a few cars lately. That's a nice idea. Range Rover started taking on too because Jaguar Land Rovers are all the same people. What I don't really like though, is when things go wrong with fuel injectors, spark plugs, what have you, well, they're all underneath this plastic, and to take this off, you've got to take off that cover, pop out the clips, and then lift it off. And it's not, it's not that neat and tidy, it's a bit tricky. Over here, we have the dipstick. That's fine, it's nice and easy to get to. Beside that, we have the steering fluid, and you can see the level in the steering fluid quite nicely. Full marks for that. And then down this side, we have, there's your ABS system, that's fine. Here we have screen fluid, grand, a fuse box, okay. People are gonna say, hold on, Paul, you're missing the brake fluid. No, they've hidden it under here. There's your brake fluid level. And that's impossible to read. That's down the side. And once it gets dirty, as it does on older cars, it's very, very hard to read the levels in that. So I don't like that particular idea. That, that gets a down mark for me. The 4.2 petrol engine that fits in here with the V8, there's even less space. It's very, very hard to work on these engines because there's nowhere to put your hands in to service anything. So they squeezed in an engine into every square inch of space. Okay, fair enough, but it's a bit tricky to actually maintain. Okay, so that's a brief introductory video to the S-Type, the history of the S-Type, the various generations and how it developed and how it turned into that, which it has to be said is a superior design from Jaguar. But don't forget, this came out in 98 and the market was different, right? So let's have a quick look at now at the interior of the S-Type, see what we think about that. This particular one has a slightly upgraded interior, so that's good, we can see what the SE comes with. And don't forget, as always, like and subscribe, journeyfrompetrolhead.com as well, check the website, and we bring in more videos. Thanks guys.